We've got to have some serious refereeing and rules for this fishing derby. <sighs> Fine. What rules? Rule number one, only bass count. You can catch largemouth bass or smallmouth bass. A bass is a bass. Well, actually... I, I don't care. Next. Rule number two, no live bait, only lures. Fine. Rule number three, catch and release. All the fish are kept alive and healthy in aquariums until weigh-in. Then we let them go. Rule number four, contest over at sundown. Whoever has three fish that weigh the most wins. Rule number five, super important. No fishing in the spawning grounds. What's that anyway? Spawning grounds? It sounds gross. Spawning grounds. It's where a female bass lays her eggs. 100,000 of them in a nest. And then the male bass, the father, stays with the eggs to protect them until they hatch. He's always on guard because sunfish gang up in packs. When one darts in, another comes in from the other side. You're not allowed to catch a male bass guarding a nest because if you take him away, the sunfish will gobble up all the eggs and there will be no baby bass. So, to protect the bass of this lake, there is absolutely no fishing at the spawning grounds. Okay, enough with the nature show already. Is that it? Let's motor! grounds. Hey! Ah, ah, oh! Ah, ow, ah, what do I do? What do I do? Rule number five. Ah, ah. Ew. No fishing at the spawning grounds. You're out of here. So what? Rule number one A, I've got a better idea how to win. It's all yours, Big Daddy Bass. Bass, back on the nest. Spawning ground secure. Now let's go help Gavin win this thing. Now that's what I call one big heap of sleep. Lions are the king of the catnaps. Good one, Martin. I like lions. Yeah, lions sleep even more than Jimmy. A lion sleeps up to 18 hours a day. But when a lion's up, it's the top predator in Africa, the king of beasts. When is one of them gonna wake up? Look, the prince of beasts has arisen. He's so cute, but a little nuts. He's not thinking of waking the boss lion up, is he? That's his dad. Still, the cub would fit in his mouth. Oh, lion dads are real protective of their cubs. But nobody likes to be woken up. Uh-oh, now we've done it. <laughs> See, I told you, a lion dad takes good care of his cubs. <gasps> he who breathes fire. That's what we've got to call him. He who breathes fire. In the local Swahili language, that translates to Ane Pumua Moto. Ane Pumua Moto. He who breathes fire. Nobody is going to mess with the pride with he who breathes fire as the guardian. He must be 180 kilograms and as big as a lion gets. Yeah, Ane Pumuamoto looks to be five years old and in his prime. And that's his job to guard the lionesses anywhere from two to 20, plus his cubs, from danger. Of the 36 species of wildcat, lions are the only ones that live in a big social group, a big old family. Uh, then where's he going? Mm -hmm. Oh, 
All right, yeah! Woohoo! He's going on patrol! Every few nights or so, he'll patrol the Pride's territory to make sure there is no intruder, like other lions around. He doesn't wait for trouble to come. He goes out to stop it. Yeah, but what if Trouble finds the Pride while he's gone? Well, the lioness are tough. But if Trouble shows up that they really need help with, like a really big clan of hyenas or other male lions, the lioness will call for the lion and he'll come charging back. Saving the Pride with the lion powers. Whoa, what's wrong with this seahorse? It looks like he swallowed a golf ball. Yeah, and a good name too, Chris. Golf ball, nice one. What's going on? I don't know. <gasps> they're baby seahorses. And they're swimming out of some kind of pouch on his belly. Uh, I think you made a mistake calling golf ball a he. Golf ball's obviously a mom. Actually, golf ball is a he. Yeah, in seahorses, dads give birth to the babies. What? Yeah, it's true. In fact, seahorses and pipefish are the only creatures in the world whose dads give birth to babies. Whoa! Now that is one cool creature feature and a great power for the seahorse power suit. But I need more details. Find out more! We've got to get even smaller. Hey, I'm always up for a little miniaturization. Hey, Martin, where are you? I'm right here. Where are you? I'm turning on my creature pod light. <gasps> there are hundreds and hundreds of tiny seahorses in here. Yeah, one seahorse dad can have as many as 1,500 baby seahorses. And as soon as they swim out of the pouch, they're on their own. But for now, they're safe in the pouch. Whoa! There! A puffin is a little seabird that can fly so far. A puffin can fly 100 kilometers out to sea, looking for big schools of small fish, like herring and sardines. When he spots them, the puffin dives. He plunges into the water and catches a fish in his beak. And then he comes to the surface to eat them. When he has eaten enough and is full, he comes back? No, he keeps diving, catching more fish. And more fish. And more fish. And he stores them in that special beak. What special beak? What's so special? Hola, I didn't see you there. See the puffin's big parrot-like beak? Yeah. <laughs> That beak is specially designed to carry lots of fish. Oh, yeah, look! Naturally serrated edges. I can see how that can hold fish. Look, here he comes. He's returning with a full beak. That's how the puffin carries food back. In his beak! Increíble! How many does he have? 18, 19, 20! Why does he have to carry so many fish? To bring food for his mate who stays with the chicks and to feed the chicks themselves. Aww. I'll call you Puff. And you, the Finster. Stop the rescue mission. What? It's too late. We left the nest. See? Oh, oh boy. We made a big mistake. Moo was supposed to be in that nest the whole time. Well, kinda. What do you mean? He's not a shrike. I know, but it's natural nature. Buffalo birds are nest parasites. They lay their eggs in other birds' nests. That's just what they do. Nest parasites. Of course, we should have known. So Moo didn't need rescuing at all. Oops. And now we've got to fix this mistake. But how? What are we going to do with a buffalo bird chick? We can't put him back now then there's only one thing left to do. I think we may have just become Moo's new parents. Well, that's gotta be a record for the most creature mysteries solved in one day. 
Yeah, we found out that shrikes are the mystery predators that thorn their prey. And we figured out that buffalo birds, a.k.a. cowbirds, are nest parasites. And it says here that they'll do it to over 220 different kinds of birds. Man, those buffalo birds are sneaky. Uh, can I get a snack over here? Coming up! Fresh buffalo berry pie a la Shrike. Nice! I'll leave it here if you want more later. Everything okay in Bushville? I guess so. The robin's nest is looking pretty good. And Moo is all set up right up there in the new nest we made him. Coming! Ugh. I'll tell you something, though. It's not easy keeping even one chick fed. Is that why buffalo birds do what they do? Well, not exactly. They do it because buffalo birds are always on the move with the bison herd. So they don't stay in one place long enough to build a nest and raise chicks. Ugh. Okay, okay, I'm going. Ah, this guy never stops eating. Ow, and I'm getting a crick in my neck. How much longer until these chicks are raised? Uh, just a few weeks. A few weeks? Uh, oh, my aching neck. What's going on? It's not what's going, it's what's coming. A Gary old crocodile. <gasps> Nosy! Look out! What a rescue! Oh no, Schnozzle! You okay? He's hurt. Schnozzle? He's banged up really badly. We gotta get him back to the HQ. We can fix him up there. Uh-oh. But the troop depends on him. I know, but we don't have any choice. Without Schnozzle, who's gonna be the one and only adult male of the troop? I don't know. Who's going to protect the troop from predators like the Gary Owl? I don't know. Who's going to be Schnozzle while Schnozzle's gone? I know. What? You are! Me? Hey, I, I know I like to monkey around, but taking his place? I, I have no idea what to do. Ah, but the troop's counting on you. I'll be back in a flash. Hang on, Schnozzle! <laughs> Uh, uh, okay, I'll start with one of those Kerhawk sounds to show everybody that I can do this. <sighs> Ooh, <laughs> that was my first try. I'll get better, I hope. We've got a proboscis monkey that needs some help here. Uh, which one? Schnozzle. He took a big fall. Martin's keeping the troop together until this guy recovers. We'll fix you up, Schnozzle. Just relax. You'll feel right at home here in this tree. <laughs> 